the format of being robot. To start off my first top 15 video, I would like to start off a small disclaimer for everyone watching this. This is only just for constructive criticism, and is not meant for hate nor harassment. Now, with that shit out of the way, let's begin with the introduction. There are types of overrated and gone to death creepypasta trends, either related to popular modern franchises of all things, that should not be featured or returned to this channel. As of today, I won't allow any more cringe requested by people slash trolls that label these stories as just creepypastas, not troll pastas or anything. Hell, they don't even give a shit about the I don't take requests message in the description, and they always kept doing that to piss me off. If you like these creepypasta trends, I respect your opinion. Without further ado, here are my top 15 least favorite types of creepypasta trends. Most of them were good, while most of them are downright cringe, so let's dig in. Number 15, Alphabet Lore Creepypastas. Oh god, where will I begin with this? In case you don't know, Alphabet Lore is some kind of overrated web series that is new since 2022 or earlier. And dear god, not to mention the shitty creepypastas based off of it. I will not bash the franchise for you just for those god awful pastas, okay? For example, Alphabet Lore, S Revenge, which had a shitload of cliches, plagiarism, and so much cringe that I could barely describe, like Kind Master for instance. These Alphabet Lore creepypastas still had the worst format when it comes to THX pastas and lost episodes to baby shows on the Spin Pasta Wiki. I've been expecting good quality pastas that are away from those awful trends spreading like wildfire. A full, yet awful alphabet lore creepypasta should never be featured on this channel. Number 14, alternate ending, deleted scene, and lost internship recreation creepypastas following the same format. Something that I'm done with for quite a long while since 2021 to 2022. Similar to THX pastas, they follow the same problem, references to famous and ambitious creepypastas, Microsoft Paint screenshots, Sonic.exe style jump scares, so on and so forth. It would feature some movie studio or media company fan finding a deleted scene or internship recreation of a movie or TV show from some email, VHS, DVD, or some crap, and then said fan watched it and felt traumatized by the disturbing imagery and deaths of the characters, specifically protagonists. Hell, they even feature good ones going off character and started murdering everyone, like those low effort as that lost episode creepypastas and so on, they take the blame on some non-existent person, specifically Adam Kennington or James Winterstone, for making the disturbing alternate scenes in movies and or TV shows, along with the horrendous THX trailers. Number 13, BFDI and Objects Show Creepypastas. Well, there hasn't been a good creepypasta based off of famous and overrated objects shows, like Battle for Dream Island, Inanimate Insanity, and many more. The problem is, they follow the same rancid and overrated format as Alphabet Lore creepypastas, even before Alphabet Lore existed. Since the end of the Mewtwo Fanatic TOT era, I'm done with making BFDI or Objects Show creepypasta narrations. The ones I did from 2018 to 2019 are quite bad. But what's good is that BFDI is referenced in a very decent Windows 2001 creepypasta, which is better than the garbage being around on Spin Pasta and from the Giashia era lost episode creepypasta wiki. Anyway, I did regret the worst inanimate insanity creepypasta I've made in 2017, called, Balloon's Suicide, and early in 2023, I did a commentary on how bad my creation is since the Shadow Readers Freddy's Depressed ADI. Number 12, Cartoon Crossover Creepypastas. Jesus Christ, this is really hard to explain. If you have heard of those crossover fandoms like Pooh's Adventures, well, you haven't seen creepypastas that follows the same thing, similar to fan fictions. Think of a lost episode of, well, mainly Teletubbies or Spongebob, but with a spooky scary crossover to another show, movie, or video game made or not made by the same company as the former, for example, Sonic the Hedgehog, Garfield, and Godzilla. Hell, they would even feature text from THX from all I knew, and also creepypasta characters like Sonic.exe and Suicide Mouse. 
most THX creepypastas still follow the same Pooh's Adventures styled format, just to appease the horror factor, like the Lost crossover episodes. If they were labeled as troll pastas, then it's fine. Hell, they should do this on other baby shows that are commonly beefed in spin pasta, like Yo Gabba Gabba, JoJo's Circus, Pinky Dinky Doo, Bluey, and many more, with most of them from my childhood. Number 11, Friday Night Funk in Creepypastas. A Parappa the Rapper styled video game that is new and popular in late 2020, and it's one of the most overrated gaming franchises of the modern era since Five Nights at Freddy's, Undertale, Baldi's Basics, Among Us, and so on. For most, I won't try to bash on this franchise due to the cringe pastas that FNF fans make. Just like Alphabet Lore pastas, they were just bad. In the creepypasta fan and witty, which is spin pasta but worse, there are some stories based off of FNF, like Monster's Revenge or Lost Weeks, and it makes me say, oh hell no. Not to mention, Friday Night Funkin' was only mentioned in a Teletubbies and THX crossover crappy pasta called Psychotex. Number 10, Gacha Life or Gacha Club Creepypastas, better known as Gacha Pastas. Oh god, not this one. To let you know what gacha is, it's similar to GoAnimate but chibi anime style. I have two things about this trendy community of all things. First, I'm not a gacha veteran myself, nor a gacha tuber. Second, I won't bash on the game or whatever you call it. Since late 2018 to early 2019, during the god awful Mewtwo fanatic TOT era, I once took my hatred on Gacha, or what used to be called, Gachaverse, in a form of a cringe-worthy and edgy GoAnimate styled rant. As of 2021, I changed my opinion and regretted hating Gacha, and deleted those god awful rants from the late 2010s. With that shit out of the way, let's focus on Gacha-based creepypastas, which would be called, Gacha Pastas. There are some decent and passable ones like Gacha Death, and there are ones that are just as cringe-worthy as Friday Night Funkin' and Alphabet Lore Pastas. There's even a few generic spin pastas that mentioned Gacha Club, like Tex and Zerg, and the lost internship recreation of the Don't Say Surface scene from Luca. Just to let you know, a full Gacha Pasta should never, I mean never, be featured on this channel. Possibly in 2021 or 2022, I got a community post from someone, forgot his or her name, requesting me to narrate some kind of gacha pasta based off of Slender Man or some sort. So I kindly said, no, I don't feature gacha related content like this into this channel, so the person apologized and removed the post, or that he or she erased my handle from the post that is still up. Number 9, Go Animate or Beyond Creepy Pastas. Why the hell did I just bring that up on my list? Back in 2014, I have heard of GoAnimate and its trend of grounded videos. Sadly, during the mid to late 2010s, GoAnimate is not the same anymore, so they removed the non-business themes, and was now renamed to Beyond. Didn't you know that there are creepypastas about this site and community? Well, not to mention there's creepypasta narrations done in GoAnimate, like Teletubbies Lost Episode, The Playground. My video's quality is kind of similar to the GoAnimate pasta narrations, but much better as it used to be. I use Balaboka and other text-to-speech websites or software for the voiceover, and use video editing software to make the videos like Sony Vegas Pro, and there's former and rarely used software like Videopad, Wondershare Filmora, Windows Movie Maker, and much more. The old crappy ones from 2017 were done on a tablet with apps like Narrator's Voice and Power Director. Back to this certain topic. Unlike Gacha Pastas, there are GoAnimate or Vyond based creepypastas that are not good, mainly the ones uploaded to the Spin Pasta Wiki. If they were troll stories, then it's passable. Anyway, I'm no hate to the GoAnimate or Vyond community, but I do hate how the toxic bastards came to my channel and videos, and then started to complain how I ruin childhoods and other cringeworthy bullshit, like where they sent out grounded threats to my channel. Number 8, Pizza Tower Creepypastas. You're all familiar with Pizza Tower, a video game with a wacky set of characters that is new and overhyped since early 2023, which goes over to the likes of Friday Night Funkin', Five Nights at Freddy's, and many more. Well, there was rarely any creepypastas about this peculiar gaming franchise. 
in the creepy pasta fan and wiki, there is one pizza tower pasta I've found, called just, Pizza Tower, all capital letters and no spaces. This one does not fall under the good creepy pasta category, because it has a shitload of cliches you'd expect from the likes of Sonic.exe. If it is confirmed as a troll pasta, then I'll give it a pass, so no reason bringing it up on my top 15 list. Number 7, Sonic.exe and its clones or inspirations. I'm sure most of you still have heard of Sonic.exe and its overgrowing popularity. I do remember Sonic.exe since 2013, and how it thrilled me over the years. If you don't know what that is, it's an old but fairly decent Sonic the Hedgehog creepypasta with a series of gone to death cliches and unnecessary details that is overhyped since the early 2010s, and had a game of its own, ranging from the likes of Luna Game and Slendy Tubbies. As of now, I thought that this story is outdated, overrated, and stupid, not in a hateful way, and like what I said in my Teletubbies creepypasta problem video, I won't narrate Sonic.exe, nor anything relating to that pasta as well. Anyway, it did have decent sequels like Round 2 and Sally.exe, except they follow the same problem as the previous story. The Sonic.exe pastas were so popular that it inspired people to, well, make more sequels and clones with the same format as the original pasta, falling under the EXE trend. Most of them are passable, while others are down-to-earth cringe and even worse than before. Likewise, Luna Game does not count as a Sonic.exe clone, since it had the same cliches and everything, so I won't dare reading that. To make it stranger, Sonic.exe was a target for awful lost episode creepypastas to reference and or plagiarize, like THX pastas, deleted scenes, and crossover pastas. Oh, and last but not least, Sonic.exe got its own Friday Night Funkin' mod, which goes over to the FNF creepypasta mob category. Number 6, THX creepypastas. I've previously discussed this in my THX Creepypasta problem video. And now, I have to do it again and or go further in this trend. Back in early 2021 and the Mewtwo Fanatic TOT era, I came across Creepypastas about lost THX trailers, featuring text killing everyone, including actors and cartoon characters, mainly over being scared of a certain sound company's logo and their robot mascot. Well, all hell breaks loose since I was forced into narrating these generic THX pastas, with most of them being blatant crossover fanfics that adds to the horror in retrospect. Furthermore, the band THX trailers mainly featured characters from popular or obscure movies, TV and web-based shows, and video games. Hell, you can mix them all together into one Pooh's Adventures-styled bloodbath. Some of these movies, shows, and video games were not even associated and certified by THX, with them being baby shows for instance. Anyway, Toy Story was considered a popular THX certified classic, which became the famous target for the murderous robot who is the mascot of the company. And dear god, the lost THX trailers ended with a Sonic.exe style jump scare of Tex or some random movie, show, or video game character, but edited with the oh so scary bleeding black eyes and red pupils, something like that. Still kind of makes me cringe to this day. Soon in 2022, almost a year after rebranding to the formidable robot, I decided to stop making any more THX pasta narrations due to how worse it got so far, and it was a follow-up to the abysmal Teletubbies stories on Spin Pasta. I've enlisted the narrations just for archival purposes, or maybe I'll delete the videos and then re-upload them to another channel like the Video Effects Dweller. I don't blame Rohan Horton for starting the THX thing on Spin Pasta, since he was a nice guy, and his pastas were as passable as the god awful cash grab that polluted the entire wiki. It's still 2023, and there's no way I will get back into making these stories, all nothing but a crossover nightmare. The THX test creepypasta, being made somewhere in the 2010s, is still decent and passable compared to the horrendous pollution you see on Spin Pasta nowadays. Number 5, Among Us Creepypastas. From the creators of Henry Stickman, Among Us is a fun outer space murder mystery game that was created in 2018, and then got popular in 2020 since the release of Fall Guys. 
I've been a player for Among Us since 2020 to 2021, and I used to make those Microsoft Sam Plays Among Us videos on my main channel, Topical Studios. Anyway, there exists creepy pastas made about the game, with some of them being decent, while others had the same quality as Alphabet Lore and Friday Night Funk in pastas. Number 4, Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss Creepy Pastas. Damn, I really like both Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss, honestly one of the most insane adult webtoons of all time. These hell-based franchises were created by none other than Vizzy Pop, the best animator and cartoonist in YouTube history since Tony Cry Knight. There may be creepy pastas made about these two franchises that are decent, while others were just as bad as Alphabet Lore pastas. No reason to bring that up anyway. Number 3, My Little Pony Creepy Pastas. Bronies always love to make messed up creepy pastas and fanfics about the series, specifically Friendship is Magic. Cupcakes was the one that scared me as a brony child since 2012 to 2013. There's more to this bloodbath that scared the brony community, Rarity's new dress, Rocket to Insanity, Cough, Luna Game and so much more, sometimes with the Slendy Tubby's scream sound effect going in your sensitive ears and you can't unhear it. Come on, I'm only just clowning around, that's all. As of now, I actually found the stories to be ridiculous, like what you'd expect in the days of Slenderman and other kinds of shit. Number 2, Number Blocks Creepy Pastas. Number Blocks is a British computer animated educational show similar to Alpha Blocks, but with numbers, and it was overhyped by kids on the internet, like with Bluey. Their creepy pastas had the same quality as Alphabet Lore, THX, and other baby show pastas from the Spin Pasta Wiki. Maybe its older brother show Alpha Blocks had really generic crappy pastas too. Number 1, Geoshia Era Lost Episode Creepy Pastas. Before the downfall of Lost Episode with his founder Geoshia due to his allegations, there are really really awful creepy pastas that are now lost to time. For example, Greeny Phantom Creepy Pastas, which were full of plagiarism and other kinds of questionable garbage, and it ripped off many famous pastas like Dead Bart for instance. If you don't know what Greeny Phantom is, it's a 2008 or 2009 one-person webtoon created by Robert Stanton, and was made using Microsoft Paint, Text-to-Speech, and Windows Movie Maker or Sony Vegas. The series lacked animation, leaving nothing but a slideshow of Microsoft Paint drawings as opposed to frames, followed by random audio-video clips from other media like Bananas in Pajamas and The Simpsons. Its quality is similar to the logo blooper videos featuring Microsoft Sam and his crew, which were a good classic compared to Greeny Phantom. Back on topic with the Geo She Is Lost episode wiki. Most of the bad stories on this site featured in the likes of The Line Guard, Despicable Me, Peppa Pig, Veggie Tales, Super Mario Logan, SMG4, and many many more. There is one good creepy pasta, or in this case, theory pasta, that didn't deserve a deletion is the Madagascar 3 theory. The pasta tells us the stories about three animal circus performers, Vinely, Stefano, and Gia. We don't know whether for sure if we had an archive of the story, but the only surviving evidence is my narration from 2022. Anyway, after the lost episode wiki was rebranded in late 2022, along with blacklisted subjects added, Geoshia's whereabouts are unknown. As of 2023, it's speculated that he passed away in January of the same year, according to a thread on DJ Sprout's message wall called, Blocking a User. Right now, Geoshia is blocked from the wiki. And that's the end of my top 15 list of my least favorite creepypasta trends that should not allow or return to this channel. Since it took me so long to make this list, probably a few days, I'll end off the video with three simple words. Thanks for watching.